Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm getting ready to start a new chop mix. Some of the stuff I have used before, some of it I haven't. I have yellow squash today, radishes, these things I have not used yet, sugar snap peas, bok choy. I got fresh broccoli this time. Sweet potato. And I got the sweet kale mix again, and it comes with broccoli stock, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, chicory, dried cranberries, and pumpkin seed. And it comes with a poppy seed dressing too, but I just chucked that in the trash. There's no need for that. I also added tricolor quinoa. I got the organic great value brand. And Londonburg wild blend rice. I got all these things at Walmart. This is what the mixture looks like together. This is the quinoa and the wild rice blend together. I'm getting ready to pop them on the stove and get them boiling. I think it'll take about 15 minutes. I might do them a little bit under just so they stay maybe a little crunchy, but we'll see. I will make sure to put in the description below everything that I use so you don't have to like go back and forth through the video. But I also bought, I don't know if it's chia seeds. I really don't know how to pronounce this they're organic as well and then i already switched these out of the bag uh into a sealed tight container but it's whole flax seed and i'm going to add just a little bit at the end just on top i'm not going to mix it in i am also going to add the classic egg food mix which it's a daily supplement and i've added it before so it's not new uh, and thank you to EA Bird, one of my followers. I appreciate you a lot. I plan to order some dummy eggs, hopefully tomorrow. And then I've read up on it and I, I searched all kinds of things about it. So hopefully I can get her to stop laying because she did lay her third egg today or sometime last night. I'm assuming it was this morning because I was up pretty late. Uh, and I'm going to do what it suggests and just every time she lays one, I'm gonna rotate it out. And then she can just sit on some non-viable eggs and then I can wash them when she's done. I appreciate you for the suggestion, I really do. Now I am going to start uh, separating some of these because I'm not gonna do all of this at once, it's way too much. <clears throat> I am, however, going to freeze uh, some of it in these little bitty bags uh, so that way I can pull them out and thaw them the night before and then feed them the next morning. It will just be a lot easier. And I bought a container to stack them in. So hopefully we'll have several weeks of food here and I won't have to do another chop for a little bit. But I may have to put some in the deep freezer. I don't know, because I, I bought a lot of stuff. A lot. So I've got my strainer in my sink and I'm going to start washing all of this and soaking it really well <clears throat> getting any dirt or anything that could be on them off so it doesn't harm my birds I did get everything as close to organic as I could most of everything that I have says organic so try to keep it organic uh, and make sure that you wash everything really well and dry it. I just realized that the last time that I used the sweet kale mix, I actually threw away the cranberries and the pumpkin seeds. So I'm gonna take that dressing out and make sure that I put it in. I just finished loading my dishwasher. I'm trying to clean as I go because it does make a big mess when you're trying to do everything at once. The quinoa and wild rice are done. They're just sitting there steaming on the counter. I've never cooked quinoa. I've cooked wild rice but only the one minute stuff. So kind of excited to see if it turned out right. Still have to do the beans and they're gonna take about an hour and nine minutes, maybe an hour and 20 minutes, something like, like that. I pulled the pumpkin seed and the cranberries out. So I'm going to split them in half and put them in here. So the next time I make a chop, I can rotate the new stuff with the old stuff and make sure that they all have kind of the same mix but I am going to mix it up because I just want to kind of change it up often so they're always trying new things. So we'll see everything that goes in here today. Okay, so I went ahead and wrapped the potato in aluminum foil after jabbing it several times all the way around with a fork. I am going to cook it at 425 for 45 to 50 minutes until it's tender. And then I think I've decided 
with all of the ingredients that I do have to make a couple different kind of chops to maybe pull one thing out of one chop and just mix them up. So that way they get a different variety each pack that I pull out. I am gonna use the food processor today. I can't remember if I already said that. Uh, I just want to be able to make sure that everything is kind of chopped uh, kind of the same. And doing that with the food processor is gonna be a lot faster if I wanna do it in different kinds of batches. So in here I have the sugar snap peas, I have fresh broccoli, I have the yellow squash, the peppers, sweet peppers, the bok choy, and I only did a half a cucumber because I bought the big cucumbers, not the baby cucumbers. I also have the potato in the oven now and the beans on the stove. And then this is the quinoa and wild rice mix all done. I'm only gonna put a couple spoonfuls into each batch that I use. I don't wanna overdo it because I don't want them to only eat these. Uh, I also still have to do the whole grain, 100% whole grain noodles, which are Wasabi's favorite. Um, so I'm gonna make sure that I add that in. And then I still have to do a batch of the classic egg food. And at the end, I will add the seeds on top. I obviously did like a huge batch of quinoa and wild rice. I really kind of overdid it, but that's okay. I'll just put this in the fridge and add it to batches as I go. I think it'll keep for at least a few days. So I'm rinsing it uh, really well, and then I'm going to take and put it in this bowl with a couple of spoons of apple cider vinegar. I just want to make sure everything's like super clean. I'm going to do a couple splashes, actually. I'm not going to use a spoon. That should be good. I want to thank Flying Fids and Ellen the Birds for some of the suggestions they've made, making sure that everything is clean and everything is like soaked and... Um, Ellen the birds actually gave me the idea for the quinoa and the wild rice. Uh, I like to do a lot of research and f following some of the other bird owners on YouTube and also uh, Googling a lot of things and seeing what they can and cannot eat. Um, I Googled cranberries just to make sure uh, just a few minutes ago because I didn't realize that it wasn't already in there and cranberries are good for your birds. Uh, it is a fruit, so you, you shouldn't give it a lot and it should be in moderation, which is why I split it up and I plan to kind of mix it with a few different ones here. Uh, the classic egg food, I actually found at Petco on my own. Uh, I was looking for something to help with calcium for Sammy when she started laying eggs. And then the sweet kale mix and broccoli and a few of the other ones I already knew about. Uh, my breeder is very good about telling me, you know, this is good. Or she'll post a lot of uh, pictures on her Facebook and tell me what I can and can't feed or what they liked when they were with her. I think I'm gonna go ahead and drain this because I think they're clean enough. I'm gonna give it another good rinse just to make sure that everything is cleaned off. There's no apple cider vinegar left on anything. The wild rice, Charlotte had actually told me about, and then I got the quinoa from Ellen the Birds. The videos were actually super helpful in telling me what I can and can't give them. And then I also, the whole flax seeds and the chai seeds, I think I said that right, uh, were a suggestion from Ellen the Birds. And you guys can hear them back there, right? This is a regular occurrence throughout the day. Uh, you can't really see, and I can show. I am in my kitchen. And my kitchen is quite long, actually, you can see from here. So if I'm standing at the edge of my kitchen, it goes quite far down. So the door is, is right there to go into the, towards the back door and into the bird room. They're very loud. You can hear them throughout my entire house. You can hear them in my bedroom in the morning. Sometimes they wake me up. It's like my own personal alarm clocks. They are loud. Mine are loud. This is 
you know, my personal uh, experience with Quakers is that they can be quite loud. I know that not everybody has that same interaction with them. They are not always loud for everybody, but mine are loud. I have family that have them. They are loud. Uh, my breeders are loud when I've gone out there to pick up my babies. They also scream new voices, stuff like that. But even she said hers are quite talkative. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish drying all these off and back to what I was saying about other um, people giving me suggestions is it is always nice to have, you know, more than one person suggesting things because then you get a really awesome variety. Sorry, you can't see me. A really good variety of stuff that you can try on your birds. And I always want to give credit where it's due uh, because I didn't think of it. It was other people helping me out and it, it just leaves more open for you to learn new things from people who may be more experienced than me. Okay, so I've laid everything out in its own pile and I'm going to cut up some of the stuff. Take the seeds and stuff out probably. Okay, so I've got everything cut up. I've got the radish, the sweet peppers, broccoli, cucumber, yellow squash, and the sugar snap peas. I also have the bok choy and the sweet kale mix. I have the quinoa and the wild rice mix over here. It's cooled down really well, so I'm gonna start adding stuff slowly and see what we can come up with. So I think for the first batch, I'm gonna do a little bit of pepper. One. Um, some broccoli, a couple pieces of cucumber, some sugar snap peas, a couple of radishes, bok choy. Some of the sweet kale mix. Gonna add, gonna grab a spoon. Add a few spoonfuls of this. I just want to do a rough chop, kind of like for a bigger bird because mine don't seem to like it when it's super chopped down and super mushy. They reject it. Uh, the beans are still cooking. They've got about eight minutes. No. They've still got plenty of time. And the potato is still in the oven. So those are things that are going to have to cool down. So I won't be adding them into this mix. So maybe I should add a few more other things. I'm going to go ahead and add some squash on that note. And we'll see how this comes out. I'll be right back. So I just gave it a rough chop and the pieces are still pretty good sized. I had to chop it a little bit more than I, well, no, I mean, it's kind of perfect, but I had to get that squash and stuff to the bottom. So everything looks really good and I hope they really enjoy it. I will probably add some classic egg mix to this just to make sure that it's not um, too liquidy, but I will probably wait and add that when I actually go to feed it to them, just so it helps kind of take up some of that moisture. I've already kind of started, and I don't know if you can see, but I've put two big ta tablespoons in this bag so far. I only give them about a tablespoon each because it goes a long way. So I bought the little sandwich baggies, and I'm gonna flatten them out and then stack them in my container. This is what it looks like after it's in the bag all chopped down. That small batch made three good bags and this will be three different days for meals. Here's another batch. It's a little bit different and I just pulled the sweet potato from the oven and the beans are still cooking. I have to check my timer and see how much longer they still have but they are still on the stove. I might give this one another kind of rough chop because the pieces are still a little bit bigger than I wanted them to be. Kind of want them chopped down pretty good. 
Uh, yeah, and I've got a big chunk of cucumber here. So I'm gonna push everything down with my little spatula and then give it another go. And then when the sweet potato is cooled, I'm gonna add some of that to this. And I think I'm gonna add some more of the uh, quinoa and the wild rice as well. There's about 34 minutes left on the beans and I did just finish the sweet potato. It is super hot, but it is nice and soft. So I'm gonna let that cool. Actually, I'm gonna cut it open so it'll cool a little bit faster and then I will add it to my mix. So I took the skin off. I'm gonna throw it away. Here's a big chunk here. It is still really hot and then the rest I've got in this bowl. So a piece of skin stuck to that one. Don't want any skin on it. So I'm gonna add one good big spoonful. The potato in the bowl is still really hot, but I mushed this out and spread it around so it's pretty cool now. And I'm gonna mix all this up. And here's the next batch. There are some pretty small pieces in this one but it's still got some little chunky bits, which is what I really wanted. Like I said, this one is a little bit mushier than I wanted it to be, so I will make sure that I add a couple, at least a spoonful or so of the classic egg mix, and that will help kind of draw some of that moisture out, so I won't even need to add any water or anything to the egg mix. And you can see a very big difference in these two. Hold on just a second. You can see a large difference in how much mo smaller the pieces are in this one than they are in this one. Okay, so the beans are done and they're pretty cooled down. Uh, I just rinsed them with some cold water to kind of help it go a little faster. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and mix everything left that I have. I added some more of these, I washed them, and I'm gonna add everything in and just bag it all up. All right guys, so that's it. Here's one, here's a bigger chop, and then here is the final one where I just added everything in and went ahead and did it. Again, I'm not gonna add the seeds and I'm not gonna add, hi, I'm not gonna add the uh, egg food mix. I'm not gonna add it yet. I'm gonna wait and do it later after I pull them out and they've thawed out to kind of bind them up a little bit and not make them as mushy as this last one that I did. This middle one turned out really perfect. Anyway, if you guys liked the video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day.